All right. I'm Ryan Howard, president of RMH Systems, and I am here this morning with Pat O'Brien, our vice president for automation. Uh, so we're going to talk this morning a little bit about liquid fill applications and uh, what that what that means and how we get involved and, and some things to consider if you're uh, somebody scoping that type of project out. So, Pat, good morning. Uh, you're on the hot seat for the next few minutes, so try to stick with us here. Sounds good. Um, so Pat, you've uh, you've been in the the packaging and automation uh, world for for your entire career, and uh, so what to get us going here? Why don't you just tell me tell me what liquid fill means? I mean, we throw that term around loosely, but but uh, tell me what it means to, to us and, and what we're talking about today. We talk about a liquid fill line. We're talking about um, putting liquid into a container. And uh, the broader scope of what we do includes the, the filling of the, of the bottle and the capping and the packaging, the secondary packaging, putting it into a case, taking that case, putting it onto a pallet. And then also the, the equipment before that that actually lines up the bottles to get filled. So where, where RMH, uh, where we've seen success has been in agricultural chemicals, so your fungicides, herbicides, that kind of stuff. And we've also done um, some, some projects in food and bev. And those obviously have a different set of constraints and, and rates and that kind of stuff. So uh, maybe just to, to give some, some meat to what we're able to speak to, what RMH's experience in this space, you know, how long have we been doing it? Uh, maybe give a little bit of a background on that end of things. Um, it's kind of funny. So I, I joined RMH uh, about, I think, 11 years ago, somewhere around there. Um, and I was tracing back on some files, looking up a previous project, and, and they go back even further than that. So obviously, we don't throw anything away, but we do have a, a history of at least 12 years of projects that I've found um, that we have prints on and, and retain those records. Um, there's a lot of small details that are easy to miss when it comes to a liquid fill line. And, you know, some of that's just product orientation as it goes into a particular piece of equipment. Or just um, considerations when it comes to how you're gonna handle that product um, and what the constraints are. You know, if you have an expensive product, you're very concerned about the giveaway. So you don't wanna give away even a a tenth of an ounce, where it is if you had a very inexpensive product, you really just want to get throughput through. You're trying to get a quantity of units, and the giveaway per bottle is not not as much of a concern. Yeah, so um, you, you kind of started touching on that, but RMH has over those you know, 10, 12, 15 years really developed a niche in this space, completed a lot of these projects across the country. What are some of the things that you, I mean, in general, we've learned throughout the course of doing several of these projects that, you know, maybe somebody getting started today might, might be blind to. So we've zero in on certain things like the bottle format, uh, what the temperature of the product is, is it, is it going into the, into the bottle? Is it, is it hot? Is the wall of the bottle flimsy that it's going to expand as it goes through the tooling for the filler, for the capper? Um, you know, you look at the material handling. So RMH obviously is a, is a, we're a big material handling house and we do a lot of conveyor. Um, so there's a lot of considerations about the conveyor. Um, how you wanna transfer the bottles from one thing to the next, um, how you wanna handle the cases, because those cases, once they get full, can be 50 to 60 pounds, um, all the way down to like the tooling on, on the palletizer. You know, you think you're just moving a box from here to there, but there's a lot of small details in there that make the system work really well or not make the rate. And it seems like the space has gotten pretty competitive. Um, over the last couple of years, a lot of people getting into the space, 
uh, in particular, robotics houses getting into the space um, because people look at the robot, they look at the palletizer, uh, and that's that's the main consideration. But I, I I think we've learned that there are, there are a lot of things that that we do at our to bring value to the to the project um, because of, of our capabilities as an integrator. So can you speak to the value of having the right integrator uh, when it comes to a project like this, something that includes robots, packaging, material handling, and there's a lot to consider? I would, I would say that um, probably the, the best thing that we bring to the table is, is our relationship, both with the customer and the vendor. Uh, we have direct relationships with every vendor that we use. We're not using them as a, a job or saying, hey, make this thing for me, and then I won't talk to you again for 10 years. We're doing these projects regularly, and we're in regular conversations with um, the vendors that we work with. And we have engineers on staff, so we've seen what's worked. We have boots on the ground with our technicians. So uh, we're seeing issues, and we're able to report those back to the vendor. And it's received well because they know they're going to work with us again in a month or sometimes even less than that. Um, you know, the robot is, is one component of, of the, the greater filling line, but they're, you know, in a filling line, we might have um, 10 different machine manufacturers or sometimes 20 just in that one fill line and uh, managing those relationships, knowing the right one to use is something that you only really get from having a lot of experience in, in the field. And I think something that I've, I've learned just being on the outside watching is that you can have a big line like this, but not having somebody that understands conveyor or how a label applicator works, you know, can, can sort of hinge the entire project. I mean, you can get, you can get a lot of the, the controls programming or the robot set up, which are some of the big pieces, but even, something as seemingly less significant as choosing the right conveyor or choosing the right uh, applicator or something like that can, can affect the project big time. Yeah, a lot of times you're, you're putting these filling lines into uh, a building that's already existing. So you have constraints that you have to be within. And if you don't know what the layout is gonna look like going into the project, you might paint yourself into a corner and then your conveyor doesn't work or you have to make some kind of an exception for a particular piece of equipment. And then that might limit your rate or, um, or might make the project not work entirely. So, and that just adds to, to change orders, whether it's through your integrator or you're gonna have to make new construction or something like that. It, it just, that stuff just builds and builds. And then, you know, pretty soon you, ends up costing you either directly in the in the form of a change order or over time um, in the loss of throughput. Are there, are there any um, shifting dynamics and maybe specifically the, the ag chem space that we're seeing on, on the liquid fill side? Of the, I mean, are people doing things differently now these uh, nowadays as maybe they were a decade ago? Um, it, it seems like uh, a lot of the companies we're working with, um, they want to have, they want to avoid a changeover because that, that eats up time. So we've had some companies that they're actually using two separate fillers on the same line. So they're able to reuse all the equipment while they're batching one set of one lot of chemical, they can be packaging the other. So, um, by using two fillers in line, you can, you don't have to do the clean out. Uh, you need to for the lot, but you don't have to do a complete water wash and all, all the other um, preparation for the next, for the next lot to just flip the filler over. So there's that, uh, you know, as every industry right now, um, there's a huge push toward automation. Uh, we had some, Customers that were okay using the Gorbel Easy Lift to palletize before that they're they're getting into a palletizer now that you wouldn't have expected them to do that. Uh, the rate might be lower 
but they want to use that operator to to get off of doing a manual labor task and actually running a line. Yeah, and I, I think specifically in the Midwest here where we are, the, the the labor constraints have been a big issue. So that's it's sort of an important priority right now. Um, well, I guess you know to wrap up our, our pretty quick conversation here. If if you're sitting with an engineer that's scoping one of these projects right now, he's got a new production line coming in or a retrofit or whatever it might be. Uh, if we had, from the integrator standpoint, if if we had a couple pieces of priority items to look at or advice for that person as they're getting this project going, what, what would they be from your standpoint? Well, I would say uh, plan out your your line so that you can either you're going to run one product really fast or you're going to run several products at a, at a lower rate. And if you are going to run sev several products, make sure you know what all the packaging formats are going to be before you step into it. Have all your ducks in a row as far as like liquid viscosity, if there's considerations for seals, um, all that. As many details about your product and your rate that you can put together um, along with the layout of the building. And then, you know, just find the right, the right integrator to help you select all these pieces of equipment, because even though you might be, it might seem like the same project, there are intricacies between the different ones that are going to, you know, make you choose either a, a rotary filler or an inline filler or um, a chuck capper versus an inline like spindle capper or a hard automation case packer versus robotic. Um, there's a lot of decisions that are determined, but it's all determined by your product, not necessarily what, what you might have already. Well, that's good advice. Appreciate that. Um, Pat, I'm, I'm going to let you off the hot seat. I, you know, I think 10 minutes is about our, about our value time. Uh, so I appreciate your insight and, uh, and yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks.